This is a Creative Futures video, uh, part of the Future Shorts uh, series which began just last year. And uh, I want to talk a bit about social media. Uh, tomorrow is, uh, well today is the beginning of Social Media Week uh, and it takes place here in the UK in Glasgow and in London uh, as, long, as well as other places around the world. And tomorrow I'll give a talk at the Glasgow Science Centre about uh, social media and the Olympics. And uh, I was very much involved with this as a topic uh, during the London 2012 Games, but also have been researching this area for a number of years now, uh, really since the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games. Um, and over the years, what I've seen is a growing population of reporters who turn up at the Games and want to cover stuff uh, outside of the sports venues. Um, at the same time, of course, people that were going to the games just as regular spectators or for sports fans or Olympic tourists uh, now have their own devices through which they can record and capture what's going on in the streets. They may not call themselves citizen journalists, but they're doing things that many would see as, as producing journalistic artifacts, film, text, image, for example. Um, and so this Olympic Games was, was seen as special and different from previous uh, by the organisers for for one primary reason. It wasn't that this was the first games where social media was available. Uh, depending on how you define the term, it's been around for sec centuries even. Uh, but certainly even in the last 20 years, you could say that social media has, media has been social. Uh, perhaps since the development of talk radio, the chat show format on television, uh, these were all mechanisms to promote interaction with audiences and to socialise those experiences. But today we use the word social media to define a particular kind of media experience that's born out in places like uh, Facebook, YouTube and Flickr. Um, so tomorrow what I want to say is that London wasn't really the first social media Olympics, but in the way that social media occupied every other platform, every other media environment did make London stand out as a particularly different kind of social media games. And I think what it began to show, or simply coincided with, is the change within traditional forms of journalism whereby uh, reporters are more likely to rely on social media as a mechanism to find out news, to create news, and to create the news agenda. And around London 2012, this happened in various ways. It happened through professional journalists uh, using social media themselves, but also citizens, people involved with the production of the sport who created the news. One of the great examples of this is Tom Daly, the British diver who received a tweet, an abusive tweet from a user who said that his diving performance, not having won a medal, had let down his father who had died in the last year. Um, that made headlines not because of the tweet in itself, but because Tom Daly retweeted that comment and made a comment himself saying that how, you know, how horrible to receive this kind of comment from someone. But um, the whole storm would not have kicked off had Tom Daly not created the news. And I think that's where we can see something different happening this games compared to previous, where the actors who are able to create the news that the media report um, has expanded uh, beyond all recognition and that for me is why calling London the first social media games is a reasonably accurate thing to do.